Okay, what's good everybody? Welcome to today's higher time frame session and uh, we've got Jin here and uh, what I'm going to be covering today is the seasonal tendencies of currency pairs. So today we're going to be going over seasonal tendencies and how this can be applied to you as a swing trader, also as a position trader and also as an aiding tool in your higher time frame analysis uh, <clears throat> trading with the seasonals is also one very vital tool that you need to have in your arsenal as a higher time frame trader trying to catch position trading setups uh swing trading setups and also short-term trading setups so with that being said let's get down into today's session all right so first off um, I'm going to try to explain what seasonals are in my own words to break it out as simple as possible for every of you guys so that you can understand what seasonals are and how to apply them in trading. Alright, so first off, let's go with the definition. Okay, so what is seasonals? Right, so seasonals are simply a period. A time period in a year where a currency is most likely to trade in one direction based off historical price analysis okay so I'm gonna repeat myself <clears throat> I'm sorry if I clear my throat uh, I've got a cough slight cough so I'm trying to hold it so as not to distract you guys um, okay so seasonals provide trade conditions over a period of time each year where a particular asset is most likely to trade in one direction for that period okay so this can provide very excellent swing setups also excellent position trading setups especially if these uh periods line up with market structure also the, the, the market trend the tone of the marketplace once this all lines up you can get really really explosive moves in the marketplace using this so it's very vital as a position trader, also as a swing trader, to have in your arsenal seasonal tendencies. Okay, so using the word seasonal tendencies simply means it's a tendency during the season of the year whereby the asset class can most likely move in one direction based off what historical price data has shown us. Okay, so now in utilizing seasonal tendencies, the idea is that if there is an expected bearishness in a particular season okay so and the, the the question you need to ask yourself okay is is market structure backing up uh the bearish in the marketplace once you get that kind of situation whereby market structure is backing up bearish is now uh, bearish direction in the marketplace also in line with a period of the year whereby you expect the market to go bearish that is a very an absolutely loaded deal for you it's an absolutely absolutely loaded trade for you okay so now using the seasonal tendencies is not meant to be a all it's not meant to be an all-in-all -all kind of approach trading whereby every season you expect the market to exactly give you the same thing what we're trying to do is we're trying to filter out as institutional traders what is most likely to bear in the marketplace over a period of time okay so and we're trying to figure that out by looking at past price action past price data to understand how the market behaves around the season okay and know how we can approach the market if the seasonal tendency lines up with our technicals which is our normal analysis market structure analysis and all that so with that being said, let's look at a few examples and let's look at how this can be applied to trading. So what I'm going to do real quick is to go to my Explorer where there's some PDFs for some seasonal tendencies. Okay, and uh, what I'm also going to do in this video is do a quick intro into what 10-year um, treasury notes are and how important the 10-year treasury notes are to you as a trader. So. Before we cover the 10-year treasury notes, uh, I'm going to break down what 10-year treasury notes are. So the 10-year treasury notes is a futures contract which shows 
the US treasuries, the, the investment inflow into the US treasuries. Okay, and you can easily find this by going to www.barchart.com. You're going to see in subsequent videos of me doing analysis using the 10 year treasury note. But for today, we're just going to be doing quick entry into what the 10 year treasury notes are. And then in the next video, I'm going to go into details how to utilize 10 year treasury notes to, 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 to track smart money, uh, buying and selling and investments into for, uh, uh, let's see, currency asset classes. Okay. So we're, we're trying to track investment inflow or influx into currency asset classes using the 10 year treasury notes. All right. So, uh, the 10 year treasury notes simply does the opposite to the DXY 10 year treasury notes is simply inverted to yield okay so a yield and interest rates align the same way uh what it, the the trade the market direction of a currency pairs always are usually going to be inverted to that of the 10-year treasury notes because a 10-year treasury notes is like that of interest rates so as you all know as social traders uh smart money likes to follow where the yield is and yield is determined by interest rates. So long-term fundamentals of a currency pair is determined by interest rate. The higher the interest rate, higher the currency prices. Lower the interest rate, lower the currency prices. And the central banks do set the interest rates of a, uh, of a currency, right? So the central banks set the interest rates of currency and interest rates is basically like the main fundamentals into trading the forex market, forex niche. Right, so if interest rates rallying, you want to see the currencies rally higher. If interest rates is dropping. You want to see the currencies also drop, as in respect to the interest rates. Now, interest rate also shows where yields are, and if you know the yields, meaning what is the percentage or what is the 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 return, the ROI on the investment you can get on an asset class, which is what is called yield. Okay, so this is why that you hear people want to invest in your higher yielding asset classes so assets classes which brings more yield and you're going to get higher yields when the interest rate is higher right so let's say for example the dxy has high interest rates that is going to lead to higher yield which is going to lead automatically to investments to an influx of investment because people are seeking asset classes where there's higher yield and then if the uh, interest rates drops, then you're going to get lower yield, which is going to cause about a bearish stone on the DXY because it's going to be a removal or withdrawal of interest in that asset class, in this case, the DXY, which is going to reduce the influx of investment into that asset class. So hopefully this clarifies that for people who have confusions about the um, interest rates and the yield. Okay, so... You can track interest rates and use simply by looking at the treasury notes, especially the 10-year treasury notes. Okay, so if money is being removed from the yield, higher yield in asset classes, okay, it is going to pour into the treasury, the, the, the US treasury notes. Okay, so these two are like constantly opposing each other, right? So if 10-year treasury notes is rising or rallying, you want to see the DXY dropping because DXY is going to be a reflection of the yield of that currency pair okay so if 10 year treasury notes is rising or rallying that means that when you guys to think about this conceptually right so if 10 year treasury notes is rising what does that mean it simply means that the yield is dropping and people or investors don't get seek look at that asset class as okay this is an higher yielding asset class and they will then withdraw from that asset class and want to put your money into a different asset class in this case the, the the US Treasury notes, which can be tracked by the 10 year Treasury notes, right? So if it's 10 year Treasury notes is dropping, then you want to see the yield and also the currency, in this case, the DXY also rally, which is going to be a true reflection of the constant war or the influx of buying and selling in the marketplace. So in the next video, we're going to get into more details about the relationship between the yield, the treasury notes, the yield, interest rates, and the currency asset classes. But for this session, I want to cover mainly um, the seasonal tendencies. And um, if you look at historical price 
data on the years, the 10 year treasury notes. Okay, or in this case, here we have the 30 year treasury bonds. All right, so you can see around oh, treasury bonds are also the same as treasury notes. Okay, so we can see around January to March. Now, I want you to look up and see it's a 30 year treasury bond, 40 year seasonal tendency right so the lines you're seeing here have been averaged out over a 40 year period so what you're seeing on this black line is the historical price action of um the, the 30 year treasury bonds over a 40 year period now if you look at the red dotted line that is the historical price data for the treasury bonds over a 15 year period Right, I think the blue line, the thin blue line, which is also dotted, is a historical price data for the treasury bonds over a five year period. Right, so now what we want to look at first is we want to look at the overall average price over the last 40 years and over the last 15 years and over the last five years. So we can then begin to spot the differences and know what we can do as traders, what decision we can make as institutional traders going forward so now if you look at the 40 year pattern okay which is simply the average of all yearly movements on the the, the treasury bonds over a 40 year period you can see around january to february to march the uh 30 year treasury bond is bearish then going into march april may that is when it is most seasonally can make its lows and then from around me, you're going to see an exponential rise on the treasury bonds. As I just, as I just explained, the uh, the treasury bonds do the opposite to what the DXY does. Okay, so the treasury bonds and like the and the DXY are like opposite of each other. So they do the opposite to to each other. So if treasury bonds are rallying, you want to see DXY dropping. If treasury bonds dropping, you want to see DXY rallying. Okay, so now, but now if you notice what is going on on the, the blue dotted line, okay, on the five year period, you can see how the lows which often came around May, okay, the lows of the year which came around May has now shifted into March. So now around March is when you're most likely to get the low of the year based off past, no, not, a low, not the low of the year actually, because the price is coming from below. So uh, is where you're most likely to get a seasonal low, not the low of the year, actually. Sorry. Okay, so if you look at March, the beginning of March is when you're most likely to get a seasonal low based off the last five year price action. Okay, and then you get an exponential rally from around March to um, mid April. And then the, the rally starts to taper off going into May, and then price consolidates in the mid months of the year. Now, if we understand that the 30 year treasury bond does opposite to what the DXY does, so we do expect that if the 30 year treasury bond is go is most likely to make a low around March, then we want to expect the DXY to most likely make a high around March. If we want to see them do, uh, or if we assume they're diametrically opposed, meaning we want to see them do the opposite of each other, then this is what we want to see. Okay, so now if you look at the DXY, and this is a 33 year seasonal tendency, sorry, seasonal price chart of the DXY from 1985 to 2017 is what you're seeing here. And if you look at January going to February, there's an exponential rise into march which is where you get the high of the year around march mid-march going into early may okay so what's going on All right so from mid-march going into early may is when you're most likely to get your seasonal low so now we can see the the correlation between the treasury bonds and the dxy All right so the analogy i gave whereby investment is moving from either the dxy to treasury bonds Treasury bond to DXY is correct because we now understand that just these two asset classes are both diametrically opposed. We want to see them do the opposite thing to each other. Okay, so now we understand that around March to May is when we're most likely to see on a seasonal uh, premise, we're most likely to see bearishness on the dollar. So. What I want to do is want to go to our chart to see if that actually all correlates. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to start with uh, I went back all the way to 09 which is 2009 let's see what price did around that period okay okay all right so now we can see around March 09 that price was bullish okay this is why I said you need to have a market structure first before you then begin oh this is actually pound USD sorry that was pound USD I meant to do DXY pardon it's pound USD it's a DXY All right, I don't know. This is like my second laptop, so this is gonna hang a bit because uh, I don't know, I'm just I don't really want to get new one yet because um the other one is currently in use, the third one is currently in use, so I just had this option to use it. So this laptop might be pretty slow, so I just want you guys to bear with me on this. This is like the oldest of all the laptops, so um I just decided to work with this. As others when use okay with that being said let's look at what the dxy is on right so we have by uh this is march 09 on the dxy like we said seasonal tendency we want to see march bearish around uh want to see march bearish around march so not march sorry I want to see dxy bearish around march going into me right so now if you translate that into real candlestick price action you can see from March going into May, there was this bearishness in the DXY. And by the way, guys, this is a weekly time frame. So you know how many pips this is on a weekly basis, right? Now, if you also look at the DXY, right, you would notice around June, July, you notice around June, July that there is also another seasonal bearishness on DXY going into October, okay, especially during bearish years okay so during bullish years you're gonna get the low around august which is what you see on the five year pattern the low comes in around august and all the way into the end of the year but during bearish years you want to see the eye of another seasonal high from around um june july and then drop off into october so now if we translate that into price data this was a bearish year price is obviously bearish and then we can see another seasonal eye from around uh, June going into October, which is when we see another seasonal eye form, and we get this bearish. And by the way, guys, this is a weekly time frame. Look how massive this drop was. And uh, if we go to the next year, March 2010, okay, so we have a uh, bullish seasonal, okay, on the DXY. We saw bullish price action from March going into um, the first week, first week of April. Sorry, May. We saw bullish price action from March going into the first week of May. But now, if you also look at the second seasonal time period, where we can most likely expect bearish price action, which is around mid June to July, going all the way into mid October. This is what you see right here. You see around 28th of June, price starts to drop off going into mid October and then creates the low of the year before it rallies. And now the next year, we also see the bearish seasonal or the bearish price action on DXY from March going into the first week of May. And then also the, the, the second seasonal, bearish seasonal we want to see on DXY slightly came in around july first of july we said that bearishness then a low was created around august okay so now if you refer back to what i mentioned about the five year pattern okay if you want to see a bullish year you want to see that bullish year form around august which is exactly what you see on dxy so we saw that bullishness from around august and you can see this was the open of the year this was the close of the year so this was a bullish year on the dxy and look how precisely accurate we we got to getting the low of the DXY from August and there was explosive price action going into the end of the year like we saw on our seasonals okay so 
again we look at the next year we will, we're looking for basically bearish price action on the from march go into early may but now if you look at the underlying tone in the marketplace price is bullish so there's no reason why we should be expecting or we would have been expecting bearishness because on the line market tone was bullishness all right but now we can look at this around uh we can look at this price action around mid july okay where there was basically a total back of old eyes and um we saw price willingness to trade lower around this period and if we analyze that with uh seasonal tendencies this was an excellent setup because this is a weekly time frame so this was an excellent setup for bearish prices on dxy so this was another clean setup and um basically price was not really changed on march of 2013 but if you look at july okay look at the july after price created basically equalized around this level price came down to the level went up to this level and if we know around this period that we can expect bearish price on the dxy due to seasonal tendency in line with market structure look how it all lines up and we get an explosive move to the downside for months so this on pound years it could be 2000 pips 3000 pips 4000 pips this is how you get your position trading guys this is how you get your position trading setups this is also how you get your swing trading setups and your short term trading setup so for a period of time you know what you're doing you know you're only looking for sells in the market it's only sells not buys all right so now if you go to the next one this was a bullish year on dxy so we were not going to expect any although we do have a benefit of hindsight but if we're doing this all on live price action we should not have been expecting or even if we were expecting any bearishness in the marketplace once price broke this prior high around this level and we tested via this candle okay we knew or we should know that this is going to be bullish year and if we really missed this okay this is basically august right and i said you can expect a seasonal low to form around august so look how this low came around august where price basically retested old eyes before the rally into the end of the year which is what you see around this level so look how seasonal tendency is putting everything in perspective what seasonal tendency is actually is giving you the time basis Okay, this is the time period of the year where you should be doing this. So, and so month, you want to be doing this. So, and so month, you also want to be doing this. So, everything is beginning to get clearer as regards to higher time frame trading. Right. So, now if you look at the next year, is there a reason why you want to be bearish by March? Okay, now, not using the time factor now. Okay. Is there anything you're seeing that want to make you bearish? Is there a price action that you're seeing that's telling you that you can expect bearishness? For example, is there a massive rally on um entire treasury notes okay is there a massive rally on entire treasury notes the price straight back into a monthly order block a monthly premium level all of that factor once you get that bearish once you get, um arrive at the conclusion that you want to see bearish tone in the marketplace and you then line that up with seasonals okay you then know that you're looking for bearishness until the first week of may which is what you see around this level Look how time accurate we were <clears throat> in identifying the highs and lows of this range. Also, around mid July, mid June going into early July, you want to see another low, which is what you see around this level. There was clean lows around this level, and then there was a weekly bearish order block around this level. Price simply came to that level and went for those clean lows. So, that was an explosive move for you guys, okay, using seasonal tendencies. March, the same thing. You get your bearishness. In this case, July, there was a slightly bit of bearishness, but since the year was bullish, look where the lows came out again. August, okay. Lows came around August, and then bullishness into the end of the year. Again, March, bearishness. This was a bearish year. March, bearishness. Then mid, June, July, bearishness also, using seasonal tendencies. And, uh... Now this was a bullish year. If this is a bullish year, we're looking for the lows to come in around August. Uh, let's look for August. Okay, so this was around the August time period, which is where we had another seasonal low around the August time period, then price rally into the end of the year. 
and um, okay so we're looking for August again this was a bullish year August time period rally before price then dropped okay guys so if finally uh, the next question is how do you utilize this to trade um, the other currency pairs right so now if you know where the DXY is gonna go that helps you 60% of your trading because you know where the other currency pairs want to go if the DXY is going there you know what the other currency pairs are going to do right so now if you translate that into British pound you can see around March that is when price is most likely to make seasonal low on the British pound and then rally into the beginning of May all right so if you look at the British pound you can see how uh, all the shading boxes are all the seasonals okay so look how price is rallying the only time in a seasonal um, frame of mind where you can expect British price action on the pound US is March going into early May which is what you see here bullishness slightly bullish but bearish remember you need to factor in market tone which is all what you see here bullish price action bullish price action by the way guys this is a weekly this is a weekly time frame so you can you can understand how explosive these moves are right so if you cut the low of this week going into the eye of this week right that was a 785 pip move 785 pip move this move was about a 700 pip move so this is how you can use seasonal to get really 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 explosive price moves okay so this was about 1479 peep move all right guys so that brings us to the conclusion for today's lesson on seasonal tendencies and uh, what i'll be doing is once i drop this video on the group i'll send a pdf file containing all seasonal tendencies of all currency pair pairs courtesy of texas trader bailey who sent it to me as i had difficulties trying to find it online right so i'm going to send it to you guys and you guys can use that to practice you can use that to study and you can use that to start to incorporate that into your training so with that being said guys see you next time trade safe